Hey guys, what's going on? Today's question is minimum swaps 2. This is a part of the interview preparation kit series and we're solving arrays right now using Python. So in this question, we have been given an unordered array consisting of consecutive integers without any duplicates and we're allowed to swap any two elements. So we need to find the minimum number of swaps required to sort this array in ascending order. Here they've given an example. So if this is the array, then these are the number of swaps. Like in this step, we shuffle seven with two, then we shuffle two with one and so on. So the number of swaps required to sort this array here is five. To solve the reason why this question is of medium difficulty and it has a score of 40 is that when we look at the constraints, n could be 10 raised to five. So doing this by brute force, by looping through the array and finding the minimum number of swaps which we could do is highly, which it uses a very high complexity. So we can't use the conventional brute force method. So for that reason, so there is an algorithm which we use here. Let's take a look at the algorithm for this question. So here, if we consider this is an array and it has index from zero to five, which means it has six elements. So it's one to six and here they are jumbled in this order and we have to sort this. So the minimum number of swaps, if we go by some bubble sort or mud sort or some other algorithm, it would have many redundant swaps as well, right? So here, as we can notice, so two needs to be at index one, three needs to be at index two, one needs to be at index zero and so on. So basically every number should be at index that number minus one because the array starts from zero. So here, as we can see, if this two goes at index one, okay, we perform this, we could perform this swap and three needs to go to index two and one needs to go to index zero. So now, since we can see there is one closed circle over here, so none of these elements should ever be swapped with any of these elements over here, like five or six. Because over here, five needs to go to index four, which is this one. Four needs to go to index three here, and six D never has to get swapped at all, right? So if in this question we see, the minimum number of swaps here there are three elements and here there are two elements so the number of swaps which we need to perform is we could swap two and three and then we could swap one and three so two swaps from here and this is one swap so the total number of swaps here is three so now that you get the hang of this algorithm basically we are checking each index if it falls in one of these loops and if it does then we go on up until this loop is performed and once this loop is like completely a closed loop then we go on to the next open index which would be three and then we find for this loop if there is any index which it needs to shuffle with so here we find that five needs to go to index four and four needs to go to three so this is a closed loop and for this number six here we notice that six needs to be at five so we don't need to swap this at all. That's the algorithm. Now I will show you how to implement this using Python. Here, this is a function called minimum swaps and it has a parameter array. So we first initiate swap to zero. Then, so since we need to iterate through every index and check whether it's part of a complete closed loop or not, we can set a flag for every index. So here we can set a flag called visited and set it to false. So as in when we check every index, we mark it as true so that we know that it has been visited. So I'll create this visited here and assign false to all the indices. Now we go through each index and check whether it is a part of a loop or not so that we can add to the swaps. So let's run a loop through this length of the array. And we put an if condition if visited. So if that index has not been visited, which is equal to false, if that index is not been visited, 
then we assign the index value to a so the reason we're doing this is that since we know that if there is a number 5 then we know that to sort the array the number 5 should be at index 4 right so we're storing the index in a and now we are storing the array the number which is present at index i minus 1 so if there is number 4 stored at index 0 so we store 3 at b so that we know that this particular number 4 should be stored at index 3 we're doing this so that we run the loop of like the chain that i showed earlier we run through that chain so a stores the index of this element and b stores the index of the next element and now we can store the length of this in a variable called l which is length and what this does is it counts the length of the loop so right now l is 1 and since we visited this index now we mark this as true so it visited i is equal to is set to true now now as you saw in the example before that the number 6 was in the right position which was 5 and the position of the number where it should be is denoted by b here so if the number is at the right position we do not need to run any swaps or run any code on that so we run a while loop here while b is not equal to i because if it is i then we don't need to check it we mark visited as true first and then we put a equal to b the same steps as before but with b instead of i and we append it to the length because now it's running here earlier we just checked for i once earlier we checked for i just to get the starting point of this loop and once we get the starting point now it's all about a and b because they are changing themselves here until b is equal to i and the length keeps appending so once this loop is done it comes out of the while loop goes to the for loop i increases by one and then if it is false it runs true if it's true as it was marked here if that index was already checked in this while loop here and it was marked true then it skips it and goes to the next value so that saves a lot of time and now after this is done we increase swap by like as we saw if the length of the loop is 3 the swaps are 3 minus 1 which is 2 so we increase the swaps by l minus 1 uh, I've written this as l so yeah and that's it now we return swap and hopefully this is the right answer Okay, there was a syntax error here it shouldn't be in it should be length yep so that's how you do minimum swaps i hope you understood the algorithm because because that's the most important thing here the code once you know the algorithm the code is pretty simple if this video really helped you please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching see you in the next one